Hello, welcome back to another video. It is Lydia here. So you might have guessed from the title of the video, but today we are gonna be chatting about the Mega Drive. Now I'm gonna be chatting about my top five games I think you should definitely own and play for the Mega Drive. Again, this is all my personal preference and just games that I really enjoy and that I think are definitely must for any Mega Drive collection slash Genesis collection. And to add to it, I'm gonna be using this book, which was sent to me very kindly by Pen and Sword Publishers. Now this book is basically an encyclopedia of every single Mega Drive game that there is, which is really, really useful. And it's got key facts about each single game and to, gives you a little biography of each game as well. So I'm gonna be using this to give you some facts about the games that I'll be showing you. So without further ado, let's start the list. So number one on my list is and it's a kid in the Enchanted Castle. Now this is a really fun platformer. It was released in 1989. It's one of Sega's more recognizable mascots that was basically before Sonic was around. Now this is a direct sequel to The Miracle World, which is one of the more notable games that was on the Master System, which has also had a remake that is on the Switch and other platforms as well. So definitely go check those out as well if you do enjoy this game. Now this is maybe not the best game in the whole series. There is a few things that are a little bit clunky about it but it is the only one that is on the Mega Drive so it's definitely worth picking up. It's got lots of super fun character designs. The level designs are really fun. It can be quite a challenging and punishing platformer if I'm honest. Alex Kidd only has three moves. He can jump, he can sidekick and he can punch. So it's a pretty basic platformer, but there are quite a lot of different features. There's the paper, rock, scissors game, which is super fun and you can win items off of your enemies. And that's probably one of the more unique things that people know about the game. It's just a super fun, colorful, quirky platformer that I definitely recommend giving a play. Now, in the facts book on here, it says Alex Kidd went to the Master System for a fifth and final time after this, ending his career in the brilliant but short crossover title Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. So that's that fact from there. So next up, which is number two on my list, is Disney's Castle of Illusion Mickey Mouse. Now this is a really, really beautifully coloured platformer. So it's a very simple platformer. Basically the only controls that you have are the jump and your side scrolling, but also you can occasionally pick up items that you can shoot at enemies. There is otherwise no attack in the game other than jumping onto things. It's a really, really simple platformer, but the music is really delightful and the character designs and all the world design are really beautiful they're really colorful and especially if you're playing on a CRT this is gonna look really amazing so I definitely recommend playing this one only got about four levels so it's not a long game it does get quite challenging towards the end as obviously you run out of lives quite quickly but I do think it's not too difficult and there are different difficulty levels as well there's different versions of the game you can get Castle Illusion on its own or you can get it joint with Quackshot which actually I've not played but I've heard is a very good platformer as well it's a super fun game. Most of the Disney games are really fun to play as well, so definitely have a look at more Disney games like Lion King. And if we have a look at the fact sheet on here, there are actually six Illusion games. This, Land of Illusion, World of Illusion, Legend of Illusion, Epic, My Mickey, Power of Illusion, and a 2013 remake of Castle of Illusion. Now I've actually got World of Illusion, but I haven't managed to play it yet, but it looks super cute as well and very similar to Castle of Illusion. Number three on my list is Golden Axe. Now, Golden Axe is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's incredibly, incredibly fun. It's basically fantasy-based. It's based on the Conan series. You can pick from three different characters, all of which have different skills and abilities. And basically you just go beating up lots of different fantasy creatures. It's so, so fun. The character designs are really interesting. All the level designs are really fun as well. The fantasy element is quite unique and that's really well detailed, especially for something on a 16-bit console. You also have different weapons as well. And so it just makes it quite an in-depth game for a beat-em-up. I do find my issue with beat-em-ups is sometimes they can get a little bit samey and they can lack a bit of depth, but that is definitely not an issue in this game. So I think you will really love it. It's a classic. It's also got epic music in it as well. And I mean, look at how epic that cover is. <laughs> there is also another one in the series as well. So if you do love it, there is another game too. You can still pick this up reasonably cheap. It's about the 20, 25 pound mark. So 
It won't break the bank, it's getting a little bit pricey though, especially if you want the completed version. So if we have a look in the book, our uh, fact, this is Golden Axe was so heavily inspired by Conan that the boss twins at the end of the first stage have a death cry lifted directly from the scene in Conan the Barbarian, where an enemy is impaled by a booby trap. So there you go, really heavily inspired by Conan. Number four on my list is one of my very, very personal favourites, and that is Outrun. I'm not a massive racing fan myself, but I do really enjoy sort of more traditional arcade games, and this is probably the best you can get, in my opinion, of arcade racing games. Now, it, the gameplay is really, really simple. Basically, you can brake, you can accelerate, and you basically have three lanes where you dodge oncoming traffic and obstacles to get to your final destination. That's it. That's really the main object of the game before the time limit runs out. And if you get past all five stages of the game, then you have completed the game. So it's not a really long game, but it is super, super fun. Now, all the scenery in the game is really well done. It's got a really awesome sort of 80s, 90s sort of vibe to it. It has that kind of retro wave vibe to it and I really enjoy the aesthetics of it. You can choose what music you have at the beginning as well that you play throughout the game. Just the general aesthetics of the game. It's a super fun game to play and I never really get bored of playing it. So if we have a look in the book, the fact is you get a special ending if you clear all five goals. If you can't be fussed with all that though, you can simply clear a single checkpoint then enter ending as your name in the high score table. So there you go, bit of an Easter egg there for you. Now, last but not least, number five, which perhaps should be on every single list that mentions the Mega Drive is Streets of Rage 2. Now, obviously this is a complete classic. If you haven't played it already, then you really, really do need to play it. Now this game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but it is really the best of the best, and every beat-em-up kind of copies it or takes its inspiration from this game. It is that good. So in this one, in number two, you can play as four different characters. They all have unique abilities and skills. They all feel really different to play, which is one of the things that's really cool about this game. The music is amazing. I love listening to the music just on its own. Go listen to it on Spotify if you have it and listen to it. It's a must. But also it's just visually, it's a really great game as well. There's loads of different special moves that you can do and it has so much depth to it as well. It's a really super challenging game, but you can play a two player to. The good thing about the multiplayer is that it doesn't feel any different to the single player so you're not missing out on anything if you're playing multiplayer or single player you're getting a very similar experience. It can be very very challenging I do find the bosses get unimaginably challenging towards the end. If you want an easier version apparently the Japanese version is much easier too but yeah it's just the best of the best for beat-em-up games and I can't recommend it enough and I mean look at it the cover's just amazing on its own. They are getting a little bit pricey though, so do try and nab one if you can. The first Streets of Rage is also great. It's less detailed and I don't think it's quite as good, but it's still a really great game as well. But number two is definitely the best of the series. And if we look at our facts on here, a full Streets of Rage game was finally released in 2020, 26 years after the third game. It let you unlock every version of the Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 characters as hidden fighters. I didn't actually know that. I knew there was a Streets of Rage 4, but I didn't know that about the characters. So that's a really nice touch of that game. So I'll definitely try and get that game at some point. Now that really concludes the list. I hope you enjoyed the list that I made. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my suggestions. Do you agree? Have you played the games? Do you have them in your collection? Are you gonna buy them now you've seen this video? Just let me know, I'm really interested to find out. Now, if you wanna know more about this particular book, I really do recommend it. I'm gonna be using it to find out games that I want to get for the Mega Drive in future. I'll leave a link down below of how you can buy it as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you like these videos and want to see more in the future. And I look forward so much to seeing you again soon. Bye.